This CEO with a racist attitude publicly disgraced a young black woman because of her skin color. Two hours later, he faced the shocking consequence of his actions. Michael Davidson, the CEO of Davidson Industries, had a meeting with potential clients that morning. As he walked into the conference room with his usual swagger, everyone in the room immediately fell silent. They looked at him with respect and a little bit of fear. They all knew Michael was an influential man, so they had to be on their best behavior. The room was filled with different faces, all potential clients and business partners. They were all there to compete for a major deal with Davidson Industries, one of the biggest trading companies in the city. Michael knew the people in the room needed him more than he needed them, so he treated them however he pleased. He sat down at the head of the table, feeling in charge as usual. As he looked around the room with his piercing blue eyes, he saw something he thought was odd. Sitting a few seats away from him was a smartly dressed young lady. Michael frowned. It wasn't because she was a lady or because she was young. It was because she was the only black person in the room. Michael had never seen her before, and he wondered how she possibly got in there. He didn't like that a black person was part of such an important meeting. Michael turned his condescending gaze away from her and began the meeting. As usual, he spoke to everyone in the room with a superior attitude, as if they were beneath him. He spoke loudly and confidently, as if he knew everything, and his words were full of arrogance. He didn't care about what the potential clients or business partners thought. He ignored their concerns and acted like he was the only smart and intelligent person in the room. He made it clear that he was the boss and everyone else had to do what he said. The atmosphere in the room became tense as Michael dominated the entire meeting but not everyone was uncomfortable. Rachel Thompson, the young lady sitting a few seats away from Michael, was an analyst of exceptional talent and intelligence. She was used to being left out and looked down on, so Michael's actions didn't really get to her. Today's meeting was especially important to her because she hoped to make a good impression on Davidson Industries. She was representing her company and wanted to secure a deal with Michael's company. As Michael spoke, she kept her cool but inside she felt nervous. She had accomplished a lot in her career, but she still felt it was nothing compared to bigwigs like Michael. She had great respect for the CEO's achievements. But as the minutes ticked by, she began to get very disappointed by his behavior. Michael was being rude to the clients, answering their questions in the most condescending way. Instead of giving clear answers about how his company would work better with them, he preferred to boast about his trading model and his company's good record for the past seven years. Rachel began to get increasingly irritated. Her company wanted this deal, but she needed Michael to be reasonable. So Rachel asked Michael a question that startled them both. She asked about the future of his business model, wondering if it could last for the next few years. Michael's trading model was profitable, but it didn't look like it would be sustainable for the next two years. Michael felt insulted by this question. He wondered who this young black lady was and why she dared to ask him such a silly question. How could she dare to challenge the model he had invented? He had tried to pretend she didn't exist throughout the meeting, but he couldn't ignore her anymore. In a mocking tone, Michael asked her what black community college she attended that made her think she was intelligent enough to question his business model. Rachel was taken aback by the question Yet she replied that she had attended the University of Chicago, one of the renowned schools in the country. But Michael was not impressed. He began to question her qualifications, wondering aloud how someone like her even got this far. He told her she was probably just there because her company wanted to satisfy diversity quotas. Rachel was surprised by Michael's harsh statements, but it was the racist remarks that followed that left her stunned. Michael's disdain for her skin color was evident. He told her point-blank that she lacked the intelligence to contribute to the discussion at hand. After all, people of her race were not intelligent enough to understand such things, he said arrogantly. When Rachel attempted to speak up again, Michael shut her down, his tone dripping with superiority. He asked her to look around and see if she saw anyone who looked like her in the room. Her opinion was unnecessary and she should probably just keep quiet. The room fell into an uneasy silence the tension escalating with each derogatory comment he made. Michael was known for being arrogant and dominant, but this was beyond shocking and cruel. Rachel was stunned and disgraced, 
she felt like she had been punched in the gut. She couldn't believe that someone in such a powerful position would be so openly racist. She had never experienced such blatant racism before and didn't know how to respond. Even though she was humiliated and angry, she knew she couldn't afford to lose her cool. She took a deep breath and tried to maintain her composure. The other attendees in the room were now very uncomfortable with Michael's behavior. They shifted in their seats and avoided eye contact with him. They knew he was out of line, but they didn't know what to do about it. Michael looked around the room, his smirk widening as he saw that no one was going to challenge him. He then leaned back in his chair and said he apologized for his harsh words, but added someone had to teach monkeys like Rachel their place. Rachel's eyes widened in shock. She couldn't believe he had just said that. She felt the heat rising in her cheeks as anger flowed like fire through her veins. This last insult was the final straw for Rachel. She pushed her chair back and stood up, her gaze steady as she addressed the room. Thank you for your time, she said in a firm voice, giving Michael a cold-hearted look. She then turned and walked out of the room, leaving behind stunned silence. As she walked past Michael, he didn't even bother to look up at her. She shook her head in disgust and left the building. The meeting room was left in a state of shock and disbelief. Rachel's departure left a strong mark on the minds of everyone present, but Michael's smug satisfaction remained. He believed he had put Rachel in her place, showing her he was superior. As he looked around the table, the expressions of those who remained were a mix of discomfort and unease, but Michael interpreted their reaction as surrender and submission. He leaned back in his chair, a self-satisfied grin playing on his lips. To him, the meeting had been a demonstration of his power and control over those he saw beneath him. He was pleased because he believed his words had shattered Rachel's confidence. After the meeting concluded, Michael returned to his office feeling bossy as usual. He loved the idea that he had upheld the image of a powerful CEO who tolerated no opposition. This mindset was based on his belief in his own superiority. He saw himself as a force to be reckoned with and his evidence was the success he had amassed over the years. His wealth, power, and social status only served to solidify his conviction that he was above criticism. This was also coupled with the fact that Michael was very prejudiced. He believed he was superior to other people and enjoyed treating people of color with disdain. Yet underneath Michael's pride and ego, all was not well. His company was actually facing financial difficulties. Recent market challenges had exposed weaknesses in his cherished business model, and he was on the brink of losing everything he had worked hard to build. He needed a major deal to bring much-needed capital into his struggling enterprise. The partnerships being discussed in the previous meeting were not the lifeline he needed. Michael had his eyes set on a much bigger prize, a partnership with Miller Trading, the biggest trading company on the Western Seaboard. None of the companies at the previous meeting mattered if he could just get a deal with Miller. Roger Miller, the CEO of Miller Trading, was one of the biggest titans in the industry. Miller's achievements were overwhelming and Michael looked to Miller Trading as a role model. Michael had been trying for months to get a partnership deal with Miller Trading and luck finally smiled on him. Just last week, Roger Miller had agreed to meet with him, scheduled for that afternoon. Michael pinned his hopes on securing this deal as it would rescue his business from imminent collapse. The financial pressure weighed heavily on his shoulders, so he was determined to make this deal happen. Little did he know that the repercussions of his actions were about to unfold in a way he never expected. Two hours later, Michael was going over business charts. He was feeling pretty good about himself after the former meeting, thinking he had put everyone in their place. Suddenly his phone rang. Michael glanced at the caller ID, and his heart skipped a beat when he saw the name, Roger Miller. Yes, they had a meeting later in the afternoon, but Roger was calling earlier than expected. With steady hands, Michael answered the call and strained his voice to maintain his usual confidence. But the words that followed from the other end were anything but what he expected. You moron, you humiliated my daughter in front of everyone. Roger's voice boomed. You could feel both a father's anguish and the businessman's fury in every word he spoke. Michael was shocked. He didn't understand what Roger meant. He had only been looking forward to meeting Roger that afternoon to secure the deal that would save his company. But now he was hearing something shocking instead. That was when Roger dropped the bomb. Rachel Thompson was his daughter. 
This revelation hit Michael hard. He was speechless for a moment. He couldn't believe that Roger Miller, the CEO of Powerful Miller Trading, was the father of the same young black woman he had disgraced at the meeting just two hours ago. Of course, it made sense now. Roger had obviously sent Rachel, his adopted daughter, to inquire about Michael's business model at the previous meeting before meeting Michael himself in the afternoon. The truth of the situation hit Michael like a ton of bricks. Roger told Michael that he would be ending all business relations with his company immediately. Just like that, Michael lost the potential partner and the significant client. Michael felt like a heavy fog had come over him. He had not only ruined the deal, but he had also tarnished his reputation in the eyes of one of the most influential figures in the business world. If news got out that Roger Miller had declined the deal, other clients would assume he had noticed something wrong with Michael's business model, and they would avoid his company. Without those clients, Michael's company would collapse in weeks. Michael realized how bad his mistake had been and regretted it a lot. And the lifeline that could save his struggling business had slipped through his fingers. His arrogance and prejudice had cost him more than he could have anticipated. As the call ended, Michael was shocked and horrified. He had made a huge mistake and was in serious trouble. He knew he had to fix this immediately. He quickly got Rachel's number from his receptionist and dialed it, his heart pounding in his chest. He needed to apologize and make things right before it was too late. But each time the call went to voicemail, he left message after message stumbling over his apologies, desperate for forgiveness. When he finally reached Rachel, her voice was cold and distant. She was not interested in hearing his excuses or his apology. You're not sorry for what you did, she told him, her tone laced with disappointment and anger. You're only sorry because you got caught. Her words cut through him like a knife, and he could feel the weight of his arrogance and prejudice bearing down on him. The line went silent, leaving Michael stunned and defeated. He had lost her trust and respect, and with it, the biggest client his company had ever had. Rachel knew she would never forget Michael's behavior. It had been a humiliating and degrading experience, but it had also taught her a valuable lesson. She learned that she couldn't let anyone make her feel inferior, regardless of their race or position. She also learned that she had the strength to stand up for herself, even in the face of adversity. She vowed to never let anyone treat her like that again. Now, over the next few weeks, Michael's life and business descended into chaos. He tried hard to save his company from inevitable collapse. He began meeting with other partners, trying to reassure them that everything would be okay. He reached out to other potential clients, but the stain of his actions had spread far and wide. Partners kept on rejecting him, and clients didn't want to do business with him anymore. Even those who didn't care about his racism wanted nothing to do with a company rapidly losing clients. He had offended too many people, and they didn't want to lift a finger to save his company. In the end, Michael was forced to face the painful reality. His company was on the brink of collapse. The weight of his arrogance and prejudice had led to his downfall. With a heavy heart, he made the difficult decision to lay off his employees and close down the business he had worked so hard to build. As he cleared out his office, Michael felt a deep sense of loss and regret. He had allowed his misguided beliefs to cloud his judgment, blinding him to the value of genuine connections. He had let his arrogance cost him everything, his company, his reputation, and the respect of the people he cared about. 